sit. So I have her sit on the outside. And I always do this thing where I have her sit and then I step in and step back because it makes going through any doorway or boundary, whether it's a gateway or a curb, so much harder for her to focus. Okay. Which means that there's more benefit to it. It's so much, takes so much more work for her to stay in a sit stay as you step through first. You're basically, you're accentuating the fact that this is your boundary. She needs to respect this boundary. Only walk through with you like you just saw her walk through and just be super calm like this. Sit. Good. We're gonna send her back in. So that, that's the whole thing with these clips that you're getting. You got the going in, coming out, and then going in again. Go. I'm just doing the reward like that because I think you should do it the first few days she comes back to you because it's kind of a common thing that Good, and she turned around to face me, so I gave her another reward, and I'm taking off the collar again. It's a common thing when the dogs go back home that they, just because they, they're trying to test you, they'll refuse to do certain things, like go into the crate. She may bark and you know cause a ruckus when you put her in. You need to ignore that, because um, you know the only reason that she would really need to get out would be if she's been in there for a long time. But if you're just putting her in, if she's only been in for 20 minutes and you know she just went outside because you know, she was outside and she went to the bathroom, then you know she's just, um, she's just trying to have her way and, and maybe she doesn't even know it, but she's testing you to see if she can get away with the stuff she used to get away with with you, even though she hasn't known you that long.